are sure to tackle the big issues affecting the BVI and the rest of the Caribbean. Search is for answers to today's big questions and gives viewers a unique perspective on developing stories. Follow the big story with me, Kathy Richards, only on GTV. This show is brought to you by the National Bank of the Virgin Islands, Cyril B. Romney Tertola Pier Park, NV Salon Nail Spa and Barbershop, Tisley Cross Deliciously Smooth Cider, and Digicel Simply More Speed, Reliability and Entertainment. Plug into Digicel Plus and get even more entertainment with Disney Plus included. The best of Disney. Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic all in one place. Whenever you want, plug into Plus to enjoy Disney Plus and much more with a home fiber bundle. Sign up today to sell Plus. This is The Big Story. I'm Kathy Richards. I want to thank you so much for joining us for this edition. In studio with me is a very, very valuable young man. I mean, all the young men in the territory are valuable. We've got some prize against you, but this guy, he's got some, some, some stuff on his chest. That he's <laughs> Kyra McMaster is here. Uh, Kyra, I want to welcome you um. to uh, The Big Story. It's great to have you in studio again. I think the last time you were here it was about four or five years ago. Uh, 2019, I think. It was around I 20. think 2019, the last time I was here, that's when Chantel Eldred, all of us were home sitting or right here facing <laughs> this direction. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. It's been quite some time. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, I must say to you, congratulations for what you've been doing on the, on the athletic uh, field uh, there keeping your your shine going all in the name of the territory but you know what you know we can shoot right into this uh listening to you at your homecoming ceremony your welcome home ceremony says to me you know what 2019 that was little boy what i'm listening here to now is a mature <laughs> young man you know with certain insights with, with 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 a new direction and vision and uh, we were talking here about how you see life we're not going to go so much on oh Karen went there and he got his second gold medal and uh, we know that but there is a new side to you you have discovered yourself if i dare say that mm -hmm. T t tell me about you now and, and the, the perspective of life that you have. Um, well, to, to touch on that, Voss is current in 2019 or whenever I was last year, yeah, Voss is current now. I say it's, um, I would say it's, it's just taking some L's and learning from life and really understanding how life is in a hole, you understand? The, like, I, like I tell everybody close to me this year, this year, to be honest, I learned a lot. Mm. Just, just from experience and stuff that happened to me and how I view stuff now, it, it, it had to happen. Mm. Cause, like I say, personal reasons this year, <laughs> It, this year was it was rough on and off the track and I had to grow up to a next level if I wanted it to make it out where I was. Mm -hmm. You know, understand? It called for me to to grow up as an individual and look at certain stuff differently, to be honest. Mm. And the more recently, we're going to go straight to, to what you've been doing because, you know, I have made an extra effort to reach out to you to get you here. Having heard the, the, the real touching... Uh, interaction that you had with the school children there at the high school just the day before. Tell us a little bit about what are some of those 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 things that you really have to open their eyes to. You gotta keep it. You, you have to keep it real with them. You understand? You know, growing up when someone would come to the school when I was in their position and they would speak. You know, they would tell us, "Listen, go to school. Listen to your parents." That you. You, you get told the same thing growing up regardless, you, you understand? 
and I don't think nobody really breaks down how it is to to be on a journey of becoming a man and an adult at such a young age that you you use a breadwinner, use a provider that you have to view stuff differently. You understand? Nobody don't really break down how to handle the journey. You understand? They prepare you to graduate and what's not, but to really have that conversation with someone and say, listen, when times get rough or whatever the case is, this is how you handle it or whatever the case is. Tell us some of those instances that children need to understand. How you see children living their lives now uh, as opposed to, let, okay, let's bring the example to home here in the Virgin Islands. We kind of sheltered here in the Virgin Islands and, and when a children get out into, or young people get out into the, to the wider world, it, it's tough for them to, to cope and to, to coexist because they come from a very sheltered situation at home. Explain to us the need for, for us to move that cover a bit and allow children to, 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 you know, to grow and be themselves. I think personally we have to show them that life ain't about now. You understand? Like even though you, know, you don't know if you're going to live tomorrow or whatever the case is, really and truly life what you do in high school really and truly impacts the next 10 years of your life. What you do when you're 10 years old impacts how you, your life progress in, in, my, in my views and my perspective, you, you understand? And I think the children them these days, personally, not just on the island, but a lot of people caught up on the internet life and the facade of you have to become, I'm a product of what I'm about to say, that you have to become a millionaire when you 20, 21. So now you put your pressure on yourself. Like you have to do this. You you want to achieve this or whatever the case is. Like I had goals set for myself that when I reach this certain age, I want this accomplished or whatever the case is. But I had to adjust because life life to show some stuff. Tell at us you. why you had to make those adjustments and what are some of those real life adjustments that were necessary for you and what opened your eyes to that? For instance, I had a um. Uh, a a charger, uh, challenger, mm -hmm. um, fast. You understand? I had a BMW before, and I used to pump a lot of money into material stuff. Into I wanted to look good when I drive down the road, look good or whatever the case is. But then I still rent an apartment at the end of the day. You feel me? I have on a chain. You have on designer, but you still rent an apartment. So, so you look the part, but really and truly, you have $5 in your account. What sense that make? You feel me? Like, I was living for, for, what's the word I'm looking for? The world. To please people. Yeah, I feel I had to be like that. You know what I mean? Like, I had a little change at the moment, you know? So, my first instinct was they say and they say, you know, even though people are around me, my family and friends, mom and, you know, they would be like, yo, save your money, whatever the case is. Yeah, I would save my money, but my main focus was, you know what I mean? Yeah, by the time you get a little change in the account, you see something nice or you hear about something yeah. nice, you're gone. Yeah, like, for me, at one point, $30,000 was a lot of money, you know, but I grown up now. I pay my own bills since I was like 20 years old, to be honest. Since I moved states, I pay my own rent, my own bills, car note, insurance, everything. Like, mommy and daddy were out of the picture. And that's the next thing. Like, I didn't have the, the luxury to fall back on mommy and daddy. So whatever mistakes that I made in life, I had to figure it out on my own. And as a man, I ain't calling my father for help. You know what I mean? Like, he prepared me as best as he can. He sent me out in his world. So whatever mistakes I make and how I got myself in a situation, I had to get myself out of the situation. Cause at the end of the day, I didn't have the security to call mommy or daddy. Mm. I, I a grown man. I had to take care of it on myself. You know what? It's interesting to hear in this coming from you. One would have thought that, okay, a current father is a big thing. Out there. Exactly. A like fancy salary, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah. Mommy doing your own thing, they earning. Yeah, you know, like. There was that perspective. And, you know, to hear you say that, you know, 
your parents allow you to go there and, and, and stand on your own is really really speak to you know how we parent how we prepare our young people to face over but i bet you know if there is a time that you really fall back in life you know mommy and daddy are there just to brace you to say hey this is how you can do it but you haven't realized the importance of you standing for yourself exactly you know you were able to look back at the things that you you did wrong but but also what what is kind of striking to know that Chiron the the star athlete and is uh, winning gold medals on the international scene would call you know you would feel it all right you know you feel that you know you're doing so such a great thing you know you gotta look a certain way you gotta be you know felt a certain way but but that's not the case now for you were you ever in that phase where you because you know you're this big athlete you know you you gotta do things a certain way and look a certain way and impress um, a certain way to a certain extent i wouldn't say it got to my head to a, a big um level but i mean if i go you know i gotta look good you feel me? If I, I if, nice clean. Yeah, you gotta step. If you step, you gotta step properly. I'm a firm believer in that at point blank. You know what I mean? If you gotta step, you gotta step properly. But not no more, man. To be honest, me now, I'm more about saving my money and like trying invest in stuff that can benefit me. I had businesses that, that failed, you know? Mm. And those are the, some of the experiences that I had to learn. You know, when everybody tell me no, I was ignorant. I was like, I can do this. You know what I mean? So when that go bad, you can't call mommy and daddy and be like, yo, this 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 went bad. Like, you could send me a little change? Nah. If I have to eat bread and cheese, I can eat my bread and cheese. Because them don't advise me at the risk. Them don't show me the risk. You feel me? I look at, whenever I call somebody for advice or whatever the case is, them already explain. They already don't show me the two sides of the story. Whatever I choose to do with the story at that point, that's on me. So if them tell me, that's a risk. You can, you could lose everything or you could gain everything. And if I lose everything, I can't call them and say, hey, send me a little fight out, no? Nah. You lose everything. You, 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 you are a man to take the risk. You are a man to take the consequences. Awesome. And, you know, I'm so proud hearing this coming from you. Uh, but, but tell us how, how, how your life is now constantly training and being on the track and still living life as an uh, what we would want to call an average person are you working do you have a job how do you earn your daily your own um no nah, i don't walk um still in school n what? not in school at the moment um just focusing on, on track, track. Okay. Um, there's income from that yeah I, I had like I said I had other investments that I was I have found believer again like listen me gonna be doing track for the next 10 years okay. so I try and start from early to get my investments going so that when I retire if I come home or move back home it's just to move back home I ain't to move back home to work at 9 to 5 mm. yeah, yeah. personally that's me so I rather start it from young I've been professional since 2017. I think in 2018 we opened up the shoe store. That was my first investment, you understand? And then 2019, COVID 2020, I had uh, other investments that went went bad, you feel me? And that's where I learned my experiences about life and what's not because what I thought was needed in life. It's not really. Not really. No. Nah. You're doing without it now and still exist. Yeah. Very yeah. comfortably. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I grew up here. You know, I had a trucking business. I had. Remember that truck? God you understand? Remember. I had, like I said, I had the cars. I had the lifestyle in the States. You know? Um, I already had the, the lavish lifestyle. I see why it is. It's an expensive lifestyle. But if you don't have that money to maintain it, you can just go up and come right back down. And that's what I did. Went up, come right back down. Financially. Mm -hmm. You understand? And to balance that with being on a track, fam. Mm. Fam. Mm. That's different. And it ain't just me face these problems, you know. All athletes, El Eldred, Chantel, like we call each other. Mm. And 
we go through the same struggle. My struggle is different from their struggle, but it's the same it's straight struggle. It's the same struggle it is, because yeah. meanwhile air people business out too much, but mm -hmm. like for instance with Eldred, that's my dog, that's my ace, you feel me? And he go through struggles too. Mm. You understand? He in debt just as much as I in debt. Mm -hmm. Just to make it to that point. You feel me? Because we risk everything really and truly just to get where we at. Mm. The Olympic Committee has been amazing with helping us achieving where we need to go. But them ain't our main sponsor. Them ain't our mommy and daddy. So it, it ain't everything you could cry to them about. Like if you have an injury and you need help with a plane ticket, they can be there to assist. Cool. Same thing with Chantel. Chantel ain't compete majority of the year because she injured. But you have to realize, like, that's how we make our bread. Every time you compete or run, that's how you make your bread. You, If you don't run or compete, you don't make no bread. So Chantel ain't make no bread all year. Mm -hmm. so, but she still got to pay she rent. Mm -hmm. She still got to do all of that. So this is stuff like we don't overlook. And it's just a reality that we have to deal with and do what we got to do just to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. You understand? I wouldn't, personally, my father them don't even know about so my, my parents. Don't even know about some of the struggle because I would never show them that because as parents they would worry and want to be there for yeah. you. But now I can handle this on my own, pops. You, you you do what you do to give me a pay. You just got to trust that You'll make the right I can decision. make it through on the other side. And I will make it through on the other side because I, I always take out, first of all, but also too, being in the midst of being done so bad. It only one place I could go. Like, <laughs> and, and that's, that's just it. If I had rock bottom, but it only one place I could go is up. up. So get me, up. <laughs> you Lord understand? Does whatever, but you get understand? up, does half and climb up. I mean, I yeah. complain that you and never see me complain, especially on social media, that the government ain't doing this or doing that. At the end of the day, ain't the government job to take care of we, you know? If they want to reward us, that's a choice they made. Mm -hmm. But really and truly, it ain't their priority to put us in their aspect to say, this is what we're going to do. It, it, it's not their priority. It's not their job. It's not an obligation. It's not an obligation. They, they do that by choice. That's they do view. it by choice. So yeah. I'm grateful for whatever the government gave me. You know, A lot of people say I deserve a lot more, whatever the case is. That could be the case to some people. But listen, I'm grateful for a dollar at this point. You give me a dollar, run my dollar. If you say you can give me a dollar, run my dollar. I take the dollar and keep it pushing me and tell your boss I deserve two dollars. Mm. Nah, give me my money, keep it pushing. You understand? Awesome. Uh, let's go back to, to talking to young people. Uh, where, where you see in society now, you know, and it's, it's a very concerning issue where a lot of our young, especially our young men, are going into to, to the drugs and to the guns and the violence and the, uh, people want to, to put a label on scooter, but the irresponsible usage of the road with your motorcycles and speak to those aspects of life as you see it. How I see, mm -hmm. them don't see no other way out. I mean, we live on an island. Tell me. It's hard to get out. Tell me. It's hard to get out of the islands. We don't have the infrastructure in place to take our youths and put them on the next level. We don't have scouts just walking around here. We don't have opportunities knocking on the door. Talk to me. It's limited here. You understand? And a lot of people might give me some kickback about this, but I can tell you like it is. If you go tell a 15-year-old boss, Come with me, you can make about 50 stacks in an hour. You just make, he just see, he making more than me, you know. A man who live, who, who them see as an honest man and running track, he gain big up or whatever the case is. It take Kai a whole year to get $38,000. Mm -hmm. And I can get 50 stacks in an hour. They can go for the 50 stacks. They understand the risks, your risk, you know. And that's a risk they're willing to take because they got people to feed. They want to help their mommy and daddy same way too. They, they have their reasons, you understand? But we don't have an outlet for them. And we can't really entirely, honestly, personally, I would say we can't really blame them. They, them don't have the outlet. You, you go basketball, you go track. 
how much people really and truly make it out. Track really and truly getting people out there now. Mm -hmm. I ain't even like, we have, I think it's about eight or 10 athletes actually went college this year from track and field. So that be coming an outlet now, mm -hmm. but in everybody like track. We have a lot of people that are interested in basketball. We have a lot of people interested in baseball, softball, but it had to get out. And they ain't seen no success coming from the athletes that got out, you know? Why not? Why? I, I, I think you talk a little bit about it at, your, uh, at the ceremony. Why are you not seeing that outlet? Because it had. Because take me out the equation. Who are the person? Take me out the equation, right? The only person that really made it out there, to be honest, on that next level that they live in comfortably, they could come home, fly whenever they want, live a free life, is Ayaz. Think about it. Nobody else in the VA under top tier level. Not even myself. My fa my father buy my ticket to come home. Again, just for that. My father buy my ticket to come home. Because I couldn't buy my ticket. So they're looking at us and them saying, boss, you doing all of this. You got nothing to show me. Papa Karen, what, what do you see as the, the the way out for these young people because yes we know that they know the risks involved but how, how do we guide them to other things to, to you know to, to help them save themselves from themselves we need in your eyes i think we need a structural program for sports if listen not even sports in general then but i talented you know like let's say for instance the same young boys you say that does do them their stuff if they break down in the water, they could fix their boat one time, you know. They're talented. They have the talent. But they have no outlet. There's only a few who could make it out, who could afford to go to Barbados, get a visa, and go states and make it to that next level. But we have no outlet. You understand? I don't think that's the first choice that they want to do. But I guarantee you, basketball, a lot of them like basketball here. So I can jump on basketball. If they see one person from here go to the NBA, not the European League, the NBA, I guarantee you that multipurpose complex will be flooded. Flooded with people. Guaranteed. They just need to see one athlete make it out of here. Success. And not just my success. The success where he could probably bring back a Range Rover. That they could see the lifestyle they're trying to achieve. It's the lifestyle they're trying to achieve. And if they could cut 10 years off of it just for doing something, they can do it. But if they see an honest person do it in an event they like, or whatever the case, they can do it. For the people them that like track and field, they look at me as that person, and they can do it. Do you feel pressure that, that, that so many eyes are on you, that you don't have that many of uh, other accomplished athletes on your kind of level? Do you feel a pressure so that you can be an, a, a, a positive influence to the other youths here? Nah, because I know what I do on the track, you can speak for yourself. And me not pausing where you can't speak to me or whatever the case is. I, if, you, if they message me, I answer back or whatever the case is. And I look at them, I don't see myself as a big celebrity as people would say, like, oh, yeah, big. Nah, I, I still want you, you understand? I dress the same when I come down here. I don't have on the, the different stuff or whatever. So I don't feel pressured. I feel like I still here trying to help her. I help myself make it out, you understand? And that's just the reality of it, what it is. Hmm. If, you, if you're to sit in front of the the leaders of this territory, the leaders of, of key organizations, uh, what would be your message to them in terms of being able to make a, make, make a representation or advocate for the young people of this territory? By, to be honest, my message probably wouldn't mean much if their intentions ain't where it's supposed to be. Mm. So it, it comes on if I can waste my time or not. So you have to, the, the leaders of the country, you have to ask them what's their priorities right now. And their priorities probably is getting the school back up and running, 
the road infrastructure again, the place situated, whatever the case is. I don't really be in tune with it, but it comes down to what their priority is. If they say their priority is the youth, they could do a lot better. And to, to structure programs and stuff like that, to even help them get where they need to get. And it can cost a lot, but utilize us on the big stage. Like, I, as I'm a professional track athlete. You know, I could, if allowable, if the funding there, I could bring training camps down here. I could have Olympic World Championship medalists training on all track in all facilities. I could, could make that happen with a phone call. And they're willing to come. But it's the financial thing. If they have accommodations, they're willing to come and train here all year round. Because Tatola is an amazing place to, to train. You have the track, you have the, the, the ocean, you have the hills. It's a different environment. This is where part of champion could grow. This is where I would have been training God rest his soul if that didn't die. You feel me? So we have what it takes to change the minds. Is the resources and is the funding there we're going to need to, to help. You know? So it comes down to how we want to approach the youth. You feel me? Everybody can complain. Oh, it got killing or whatever the case is. It got a lot of drugs, a lot of man and bike or whatever the case is. Then, but what you doing? You just speaking about it. How we gonna help them? Them ain't gonna help themselves. Them don't know what I'm doing. Them helping themselves. Them doing what them, what them know. How they was brought up. You feel me? So unless we as a community try to change it, nothing can happen. So. Uh, the clock is on us, uh, Kyron. It was really an interesting conversation, but you know I can't close it. I mean, you mentioned it a little in brief. Uh, five years uh, of missing dad. Yeah, I mean that's my dog. You know, I still miss him. Think about him all the time. This journey, I really wish you were here for this journey, but God knows best. God knows. God knows best. God knows best. And you know, um. It would have been very interesting to see how life would have played out if he was still in the picture. Because I feel we could have really do a lot of damage together because we had that connection. We had understood the mission. We knew how we wanted to go about it. So it would have been really interesting to see how that would have played out. But I mean, everything happened for a reason. I probably might have not had the mindset that I have now. If, no. now I, I definitely probably wouldn't. I would have been home. I would yes, have probably been still been, yeah, yes. I would have been mm -hmm. in the island, you know, we have a mentality on the island, you know, mm -hmm. we, a lot of the people then think the, the world is just the island, and even if you go stay for two weeks or whatever, you don't learn nothing, there's a different world out there, it's a different society out there, we live different down here, all normalcy is not their normalcy, mm -hmm. so we have our own views to how life is, our own views to how we live versus in the state. In the states, for example, in the states, they're dope boys, you know, they're on the corners. All dope boys in boats, mm. making big moves, you feel me? So we pride ourselves higher than the wall, to be honest. You understand? Like ten dollars ain't nothing for them by thirty thousand dollars. They want thirty, they want a hundred stacks, you know what I mean? They want to be in that lifestyle. They want to be rich. Everybody wants to be rich. But how how much people on Tatola really and truly? Born and raised Tatola, self-made millionaires. How much? They're trying to be the force. But they know no, no other way because nobody never really teach it to them how to do it nobody really say listen don't open the opportunities you don't see the windows when right you nobody there, never really that. sit on and plan a five-year plan with them or six-year plan okay we can do this for this year this year but year three this is what we can do with it we don't have none of that so great perspective great perspective and i continue i i wish you you continue to be that positive influence for those that you can and not everybody's gonna grab like you said when you were at a certain age you didn't just grab what my mommy and daddy was trying to show you what did you yeah i was rebellious i was rebellious you could ask yeah. my pops them man like 
He also, my mom and pops used to cut your short bars. I can go do this. I had the tattoo on my set. I was ignorant, you know what I mean? I was, it's my way or the highway. Aye. But I learned it now, like, yo, more than one way to skin that cat. So, Aye. we can slow down for a second. We can Take reassess the, the, the situation. We can think things through better. We can move strategically. And we can make it happen. We're going to make it happen. We're going to make and it happen. Along that journey, grab as many persons' hands as you can take along with you. So yeah, most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. My, my, honestly, my main objective, God spell life, health, and strength. Within the next three to five years, I want to build a facility home, a state-of-the-art facility, where we could have a development for youths and still a schooling program that gets them prepared to go straight to the States right from that facility. Basketball, volleyball, whatever sport we want to have a special to target everybody. And we going on the block and we hunting them. But boss, listen, come. Thank you so much. And I want to say thank you for joining us for this edition of The Big Story of Candy Richards.